my photographic uh, journey started, um, well, I started at DUT um, and I finished at DUT in 2013. I was there from 2010. Um, and uh, yeah, so while I was um, in the photography department at, at DUT, um, I was really interested in, uh, in drama and performance. Um, so I, I decided to um, approach the, the drama department um, and sort of request that I spend some time with them, with their students, and they agreed. So um, I ended up spending two years essentially at the, at the drama department at DUT. Um, And uh, yeah, re really what that looked like was um, me sitting on the floor a lot, um, photographing rehearsals, uh, a lot of backstage. I didn't do too much from the audience looking at the stage because I wasn't really, I was more interested in the backstage and the, and the processes and the relationships between the, performers and audience and how they changed and molded and throughout the whole process. Um, I also, when it comes to photographing people, uh, a lot of my people photography is process based. So very rarely will I photograph a person once off. Um, I, I do prefer to spend a lot of time with, with people. So spending two years in this department was just completely awesome. Um, the first six months, I, I didn't take my, my camera out the bag. I just, I just sat on the floor and, um, and just gained trust really. Um, when I did take my camera out the bag, I realized how loud it was, especially backstage. So um, this photograph on the screen at the moment is just to display my, my camera setup on the right. Um, so yeah, obviously backstage is really quiet. Um, and the camera that I was using 10 years ago was, was quite loud. Um, it was before the, the days of mirrorless, mirrorless cameras and quiet shutters. So I resorted to um, a Tupperware with, um, with foam inserts and a hole cut out the front. Um, and that was just to just to become invisible. That's, I, I needed to be invisible and I needed to, um, I needed to let, let these performers, um, sh you know, show me all of them um, while they were performing. And uh, I'll just flip through some of the images now, but this, this was um, my first taste of a body of work. Um, it was the first, sort of coherent series that I made. Um, and it's still to this day, one of the highlights of my, of my journey so far, it was just, just to have the trust of so many people and um, to have, have the freedom of, of such a magical environment. Um, this picture is, is the first time I realized that I could pull what what I felt through the camera lens. So it, it became more about photographing emotions than photographing three-dimensional you know, um, figures and forms. Um, yeah, at, at this point, it really, it really became emotional. Um, also during this time, I was hugely privileged to, to work with uh, the legendary theater practitioner Giselle. Um, oh my word, I've just forgotten her surname. <laughs> um, Giselle Turner. And um, she, at, at this point in, in time, she was mentoring um, at, a young man called Sibo Masondo. Um, Sibo Masondo is a is a deaf mime artist, 
and uh, I spent a year in in her house while she uh, while she mentored Sibon. Sorry, he was in this group. That's really close. Um, yeah, he was. Sibo was an aspiring, uh, aspiring mime artist, and uh, this is again me sitting on the floor, um, which I did a lot between twenty thirteen and twenty fourteen, um, and just photographing their relationship, which was just the most wonderful thing to witness. This is Seaborn in Giselle's home. Um, yeah, again, in front of the white, the white sheet backdrop. Um, Giselle is a is a master at, at her craft and she she taught him everything she knew really. Um, or, you know, all all forms of theater, uh, dance, performance. Um, I did some more formal portraits of Sibyl for to help him with some publicity. Um, it, yeah, with Sibyl being being deaf, there was a photograph earlier of two speakers that had been laid down on the wooden floors, and that was so that he could feel the vibrations of the music. And if it wasn't for those speakers and the wooden floors, he wouldn't be able to feel um, feel the rhythm. Um, so that's this is sort of touching on that a little bit. And I think this could be the last picture of the of this stage of my journey, the drama and performance side of it. Um, towards the latter part of my time at DUT, uh, I was again privileged to spend a lot of time with uh, Peter McKenzie uh, during his time at the helm of the Durban Center for Photography. Um, at that stage, it, it was its third iteration, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's a pity I didn't have more time to, to gather more work from this, from this time in my life. But um, this is just a few snippets uh, of Peter and the DCP. That's an exhibition at the KZNSA many years ago. Uh, called Durbanity, where we photograph Durban, um, Etigrini rather from different angles and, and viewpoints. And that's um, curating another exhibition. Yeah, so P those that don't, uh, that aren't familiar with Peter, um, the late Peter McKenzie, legendary South African photographer, Afropix member. Um, and uh, I was really privileged to be mentored by him for a good five, six years. Um, and he definitely was somebody that shaped the way I think about photographs and how I make photographs now. And I, I can't look through the frame without thinking about Peter, honestly, because he was so instrumental in, in his, um, the way that he taught uh, the photographic process. Um, jumping a few years, a, a couple, well, so this is 2015. Um, this is the trip to Portugal. Um, one half of my heritage is Portuguese. So, uh, on a recent trip to Portugal, I obviously had my camera with me and, um, made some photographs. What struck me in this trip to Portugal was the feeling of um, of home, but looking from the outside, uh, and um, it's some, an image like this sort of uh, encapsulated how I was how I was feeling about it. This is the south of Portugal, the Algarve. I'll just flip through these. I'm also conscious of time. Um, this is the Gypsy Market. That's um, a cafe window. Um, we were also there during the 
um, the European recession. So scenes like a luxury ice cream cart closed up was quite familiar. This is us on the island of Madeira, which is technically where my family is from. It's an island of Portugal, quite close to Morocco. It's a Portuguese colony. And um, on the right is, is a second cousin of mine pointing out um, an old family home. This body of work is called Obrigado Pela Sua Visitas. Thank you for your visit. Um, they, uh, Madeira doesn't have sand, so they need to import sand in order to have sandy beaches. Um, otherwise, it's just volcanic rock. The last picture. Um, this is about 2016 ish. Um, this is the this is explorations of um, of concepts of uh, exploring um, textures and uh, and spontaneity in in photography. Um, and this would inform a later body of work that came shortly after this. This is just uh, scrunched up pieces of paper that are photographed in different stages of scrunching. That became a brief body of work. Um, in I think 2016, um, I did a residency in Joburg with Ben, so it was a research residency, so not photographic at all, um, but rather exploring cities and spaces and um, civic movement. I was looking at uh, people like the Situationists and uh, Francesco Carreri and, and their theories of, of people in space. Um, this also came after uh, spending about a year with, with Dung Jahangir at Dala, um, who is such a such a visionary, such a brilliant architect and artist. Um, so uh, yeah, this was um, this was a residency in Joburg. It was a month um, where I basically walked um, walked the streets of the CBD daily and um, made visual works. I wrote text, and that all was put together in the form of a book. Um, the book, uh, it's, it's got a few, the ch chapters are looking at the city as the sort of initial um, engagement with the city. And then it's the periphery. So this is physically where I was um, situating myself around Joburg. And then after that came engagement where I would um, like literally get my feet on the ground and and walk the city. And then um, I wrote a chapter on uh, modes of looking. So um, establishing modes that we can um, depict cities, read cities. Uh, let me just um, go back. So this is, this is just found objects um, that are found while walking on the city. Yeah, in the city rather. Uh, these are um, the tops of concrete blocks that are used to control parking. Um, so I walked one sort of city block and I think there's about 30 odd uh, concrete pillars and I very methodically photographed each one and put them together and see what, what came of it. Um, this is uh, what I call a memory map. It's after a day of walking with no form of documentation, get back to the studio and try and recall the terms that I took uh, with, with pen on paper. Um, this again, just modes of looking. Um, I was trying to create as many um, 
as diverse a record as possible of a city texturally. Um, this is uh, a pressing of, of the pavement uh, using paper. This is another one. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the Joburg work. Um, I'm flying through the, through the years. Is this, is this okay, moderators? Are we, are we good? Is everybody good? Yes, it's okay. You can continue. Okay. <laughs> um, this again, 2016 uh, or, or 2015 rather. Um, this is a residency that I did in, uh, in Arles in France um, with another influential photographer, Antoine de Agata of Magnum. Um, it's yeah what an experience that was uh what an intense chap antoine is um genius super exuberant eccentric and um the first thing he told us uh as we arrived at the residency house he says i, I know you can all make photographs that's that's not what we're here for what we're here for is for you to change my perception of reality and um, that, yeah, that was another sort of light bulb moment for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I spent, spent a bit of time in France uh, with him, um, daily, uh, daily workshops, feedback sessions, critiques. And uh, at the end of it, I ended up with a body of work um, from a place called Bordeaux. Uh, Bordeaux is in the south of France, and uh, it's it's in a nutshell an abandoned um, village. So it's a coastal little coastal little village, um, very remote. Um, in the nineteen seventies, it was it was a fishing town, and it's also the only place in Europe that you can build without municipal uh, permission. To this day, you can you can um, rattle up any kind of dwelling that you wish, and uh, the authorities won't won't mind. Um, but what's interesting is, as I said, it was a it was a booming fishing town in the seventies, but it has since been abandoned, completely abandoned. So all of these houses, the doors are open, you can walk right in and there's, there's you know, cups with tea inside, there's dishwashing, um, there's soap in the sink, there's, there's towels screwed up on the tabletops. It's as if people were just, We are sort of evacuated, so I'm not really sure why. Um, I'd love to look look further into this area and revisit it, because uh, yeah, unfortunately, I was very time constrained. Um, so this is inside some of the homes. I had to cycle here on a bike um, every day through. A, very remote, uh, desolate landscapes, uh, moonscapes that they were actually. Um, that's another scene. And the, the first photograph of the series with the car upside down, it was, but that was a pretty common sight in this area. It was completely otherworldly, um, completely amazing. Uh, this was the only form of life that I encountered flock of flamingos, which are really beautiful. Um, and this is the, the marshland that leads you to Bordeaux. So on the horizon, you can see the dunes um, that sort of separate this area from the little cluster of homes. There's about 30 to 40 homes um, in the area. So it's really small. And yeah, I'd love to go back and it was a really, really cool experience. Um, 
2019, uh, my son Adam was born on the 5th of August. Um, so this is, yeah, a few pictures of home and, uh, and my family. This is essentially what I love doing, documentary photography. Um, spending time with people that I admire and respect and um, seeing what that looks like through the camera. I'll just flip through these. I'm not sure how much I can elaborate on these ones. Most of it is black and white, but there are a few color here and there. That's a waterproof nappy protector, drying in the nappy. This is a COVID birthday in our garden with the chairs a meter apart or 1.5 or Um, in between the home pictures, there's, there's photographs in hospitals because children spend lots of time in hospitals. Uh, this is Adam in the pediatric ward, also during COVID. So my time with Smey and Adam were very limited. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I was able to just spend a couple hours over the course of a week that he was there and uh, yeah I just made a few photographs which I put into a contact. I'm, I'm really inspired by the work of Annie Leibovitz who who uses the photographic frame extremely brilliantly um, and uh, yeah I love exploring camera work really. This is Adam when he got back from the hospital, his first run in the garden for more than a week. Uh, this is just a few singles just to keep it chronological. This is uh, Clarence. That's also Clarence. This is just with an iPhone. Um, I'm, I'm, com I'm not technical at all. I just, whatever camera I have at the, at the time I'll use, uh, I don't really pay too much attention to megapixels and that sort of thing. Um, this is some burnt felt in the Drakensberg. Son, at the hospital again. Um, this was Adam's second stay over at the hospital, and uh, I gave Smear a break and I slept over a couple nights. So, this is the pediatric ward at midnight, which is a very grim place. Um, first day at priest at Krish in the garden. It's not the home scene. He's also just cell phone pictures that, that I'll do something with at some point, but uh, I, I enjoy the idea of contact sheets and seeing them in one frame. First haircut or pre-first haircut rather. Um, I think I'm wrapping up. This is just the Durban promenade. 
you know, so these are just a few singles that um, are part of a larger body of work at some point, but it's it's a it's an ongoing project that looks at the Indian Ocean and uh, and what we do along its shores. This is a technique that I enjoy working with. Um, I mentioned that I'm really interested in camera work, and this is this is purely just a technical sort of problem solver. Really, um, if I if I want to include more of a frame, but my focal length doesn't allow it, I'll just make two or three photographs and simply put them together. That's that's really all it is. Um, that's an element of interest. This is another one from the ongoing Indian Ocean series. This is Blue Lagoon. This was Blue Lagoon after the flooding, by the way, um, April 2022. The, the river mouth was completely destroyed. I realize I haven't um, touched much on contemporary archive project, but I think that that's a whole session on it, uh, you know, by itself. But um, it was during these walks that Neve and I conceptualized um, the contemporary archive project. A lot of these walks were during lockdown, and uh, yeah, that's that's how the the concept came about. Really, is walking up and down the promenade. This is Inland KZN. I think this might be the last frame. So that's a wrap for me. Oh, Paolo, thank you so much. Um, I have to say, can let me turn on my video? Our conversation, uh, our conversation today is going to be a little bit different, unlike our first one. Our beautiful body of works that you've shared with us. And oh, uh, I just got goosebumps, especially from the first one. Um, hello? Okay. Uh, I think I'm having connectivity problems. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Uh, okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, I was still saying I got goosebumps by just looking at the first part of work that you shared with us. As I said earlier on, I want to make this conversation different because you are a well uh, matured photographer, unlike somebody who's still coming into the space. And I know we have young photographers who are joining in who have a million questions I'd like to ask you, but I'm, I'm going to open up the floor um, so that people can ask questions, but I think what stood out for me from all of the bodies of works that you've shared with us is, is particularly the first one, maybe this could be a first question for me that you could answer for us is, um, you take time to study the participants or people that you're working with, because it shows throughout your images that you don't rush all of your work, you don't rush your images, you don't just visit the space the first time and then all of a sudden you take pictures. Um, so how how has that influenced how you create your work, visiting the spaces, spending time with people until you reach that Damascus moment, like you're able to take out your camera and then you start photographing. Like I had you the first time when you was talking about the DU2 that you spent six months with them before even taking out your camera and photographing. So how has that influenced how you create your work? Um, well, the re if, if I can start with, with uh, responding with the reasoning behind that, uh, I'm, I'm a, a fairly introverted person and it takes a lot for me to hold up a camera to a person, hold up a camera to a space. And I'm, I'm very much of the idea that as a photographer, we've, we've got a responsibility. We, we, um, 
this is not like a willy-nilly thing that we're doing. And with every photograph that I make, I really want that to be the best document of that person or a scene or a space as possible. So it, with that slowing down process, um, it, it just allows me to absorb um, as much as I can about the subject. And for, for them, if it's a person or the space to accept me in their space. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's that sort of collaborative effort that uh, with every photograph I try to achieve and um, and why I do it, because I really, I, I respect the medium and I respect my subjects. And um, yeah, I, I want it to be the, I want it to be a special moment because what happens inside that rectangle, that's all we've got as, a, as photographers. Um, mm -hmm. it, we're not making moving pictures with audio and, and uh, narration etc we that's all we've got so um yeah just trying to make it the the best possible version of it that i can mm -hmm. um uh, we also have a question from Sbuseso that he would like to know how is it different for you to photograph on the street compared to home indoors spaces and does your exploration of modes of seeing include a psycho geography so let's okay. just break the question into two segments uh, how is it okay. different from you to photograph landscapes or streets and like mm. photographing home and indoors um for me i i don't feel like it's a big shift uh yeah i, I don't feel like it's I, i'm as comfortable in both settings um yeah i I do uh, I do love photographing spaces outdoors. Um, Neve always always jokes that a person, well, a photograph that's made by me doesn't have any people in it. So that's uh, I, I love those kinds of environments. Okay. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, so geography. Um, yes. Was your question already? that. I wasn't um, so in the does... space for long enough to look at psychogeography. What I was looking at was civic movement and how people move in in uh, in space. Um, it was also my first time in Joburg, amazingly, in 2015. So that was that was a bit strange. Um, so this, yeah, it, it was very much me um, approaching a city just as I would approach any other subject matter, matter that, I, that I touched on, on earlier. So um, I was very methodical in approaching it, firstly, you know, from, from a distance point of view and then the periphery and then the engagement and making the works um, texturally on the ground. Um, so it was, it was very much that sort of angle that I was looking at. It, it, it wasn't, uh, I didn't get into psychogeography much. Okay. And one dealer would also like to know what's your favorite um okay, uh what's your favorite uh space and and genre in photography? Um genre, no doubt, is documentary photography and my favorite space, um Physical space, uh, just because it's local and I spend lots of time there, is the Durban Promenade, the Durban Beachfront. I think it's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, that was about to lead to my second question because I've seen that you're photographing uh, internationally. So how 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 was it photographing home and having the opportunity to photograph uh, internationally, gaining space access to the spaces? As you said, you respect the medium, therefore you decide to take time and study um, the space before. So how has that influenced? How, how do you go about doing that? Um, my work abroad, it, it gave me really valuable nuggets of um, 
sort of the way that I go about my practice. So yes, I, I was able to create bodies of work, but for me, it was more, the bodies of work are not as important as the process of mm -hmm. um, residencies, the mentorships that I was given, um, just, just engaging with a different set of people and a different set of cultures. Um, I, I, yeah, I took a lot more from the experiences um, and the bodies of work, obviously, nice sort of bonuses to have, but um, it was very much the, um, the development of those, mm -hmm. of those residencies and time abroad, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we do have uh, guys, you are all welcome to ask Paolo questions. The reason why we wanted to have an experienced or well-natured photographer so that um, he could share his experience with us as um, up and coming or young photographers, then we can get to interact with him. So yeah, just for people that you, who are logged in, you are welcome to ask more questions. Um, Paolo, I'm logged in. I can make a comment. Guys, so I think, yes. yes. <laughs> so okay. I think it was so cool because I haven't seen half those photos and it's so like, it's so you. I don't know how else to put it, but it's such a reflection of who you are, like very calm, very quiet, and also your values, like your family, you know, your core um, things in your life that matter. So it's really nice to just see more especially the Adam series I mean it's really great and I do think it would be interesting to exhibit you know stories of the self and like your home literally at home with your child you don't really see that I don't know I might be wrong mm -hmm. but in photography in South Africa people being that intimate and I mean it's also your child it's a small kid and very very vulnerable especially him being in hospital um, but that's also the reality of being a parent you know it is quite scary um these things happen and it's also relatable to people who have children or young children as well um so that's just my compliment on for you share uh, with you sharing those intimate images which would be nice to see like in a gallery space you know not just in a photo album um, um, yeah yeah i'd love to exhibit this whole this whole decade of work so if there are any gallerists on this call and want to find an exhibition, you know where to. We'll make it happen. I think. Uh, is, what is <laughs> what mediums yeah. outside of photography do you oh, get yeah. to Can you read it? Yeah. Um, I, I love looking at moving images. So well made cinematography. Um, I, I try to pull a bit of a bit of cinema through my through my still work. Um, so that's that's a big inspiration for me, and I really love theater. So uh, I love drama, I love performance, and uh, I've been so so lucky to spend time with performers with my camera. So that's yeah, the those two areas um, I really get inspired by. Um, okay, you're seeing the next question about um, what, are, what is your editing process? Loves your yeah. um, I'm, I'm very specific on, on the time of day that I make photographs. So that plays a part. Um, up until recently, uh, I've, I've been using a Fuji film camera and uh, the colors um, on the Fuji are really, really beautiful. Um, but most of this work was done with a Nikon. So uh, it's just, I don't have an extensive editing process. Uh, I'm extremely non-technical. So I just put it through Lightroom and just make very minor tweaks to, to kind of give it a boost, but, but that's about it. It's, yeah, I'm very deliberate on time of day, lighting um, and yeah, something, if something catches my eye, I try to try to photograph it as best I can. So thank you.
I think we've lost um, Zanele. I think she's got um, her phone yeah, died. She she. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I mean, that's a really great kind of wrap. I don't know if there's anything else anyone would like to add, but thank you, Paolo, for that was a really great body of work. You do have a lot. And we do need to get it out there maybe a little bit more. Maybe with Captivate, we can make space in a, visit, in a physical mm. space somehow to show your archive. Um, it was a lot. It was a big rabbit hole. Oh, Dave. OK, Dave has a question. Hi, Dave. Hi Paolo. Um, thank you for that. That was great. Um, I'm interested in how artists sort of make sense of their, their bodies of work. Um, so I guess I'm interested in what this process has done for you in terms of your ways of looking at your work. Um, I mean, there's things I've picked up on just through this presentation, you know, sort of um, this first body of work with the, with the performance has a kind of resonance with your your body of work with your son in terms of a kind of process. Um, your Joburg body of work has this kind of mapping and this ambulatory kind of quality to it that 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 has resonance in other bodies of work. Um, but I guess it's 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 important this thing that we that we do right kind of reviewing a kind of inward looking um, mapping our our bodies of work. Um, so what has it what has it done for you? What has it revealed? Have you noticed any kind of cross pollinations or kind of resonance between periods, eras of of, of body uh, sort of bodies of work? Yeah, it it has. It, it's made me realize that um, through time, um, they are. I'm trying to trying to be coherent with with what's happening in my brain um i've 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 got a few modes of looking at the world and and making and i've realized that these modes um as you touched on dave spring up in different bodies of work um sometimes six eight years apart um without me actually thinking about you know I'm going to reference my performance when my son, you know, my performance work when my son is born. Absolutely not. It's just, it just, that's just how I look at, you know, I see the world. That's how I, um, how I look at things through a camera. Um, so yeah, it, it, it made me sort of, it was a re review of, of almost for lack of a better term, my, my sort of palette or my toolbox. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm battling to be to be coherent, but uh, yeah, I think I think that's about it. <laughs> Sorry. Can I thanks? Yeah, can I add one more observation quickly? Mm. There's this kind, of, you know, there's this. Um, what's the word? I mean, you cite your kind of introversion um, for a, a kind of tone of your work, but it's a it's a, it's a great sensitivity to 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 human beings and, and characters in, in your images. Um, and I think that also comes out of this thing of photographing performance because you're in the space of like enormous vulnerability from the performance. They they're sort of displaying this and they're kind of letting you in on that process. Um, and I find it quite funny that the, like your intention was to become invisible in that space. And one of the solutions was this massive Tupperware, <laughs> but, it's, but it's not about that, right? It, that it, it's it's about a kind of way of being in a space as a as a kind of person documenting. Mm. Um, and I, I, uh, I think this is what I'm seeing, kind of from that first body of work. Um, there's a sensitivity that perhaps was learned in that space. Absolutely. That seems to follow through in your kind of in your treatment of of spaces and people. Yeah, it was a hugely um, 
influential time in my life. And it was, it was the point in time that I realized this is important, you know, this having a camera in one's hand, it's, it's a real, really important thing. And it's, um, it's, it's a big thing to have it in front of a person, you know, to have this camera um, affecting space and affecting the people in that space. And uh, it, it was, um, it was a turning point and I'm, I'm lucky to have it, to have had it so early on in my, in my journey. And um, it absolutely did pave the way for how I make photographs and how I interact with people. And um, yeah, the way that I think about, about the camera and, and pictures, yeah. Anybody else? Well, thanks, Paula. I think we have about a few minutes left, but I okay. think that was kind of a really beautiful ending, and I might just wrap it up there. Um, oh. Wandile did ask about prints. Do you sell? And I said, yes, you do. I do sell. Um, yeah. Um, is this the chat? Uh, let me just. Uh, uh, this is my website. So. Yeah, so we follow ourselves with our friends, and then if you join our mailing list as a fundraising um, thing for CAP, we do sell all of the collective's photography prints yeah. to raise funds for the photographers part of the collective as well as the um, CAP, so we can do these initiatives a bit more in other projects. Um, anything else you want to say? available to sell prints, yes. Okay, cool. Well, um, thank you so much. That was really great. And we are probably going to have another session, um, hopefully in September. We're hoping to make it a hybrid, so in person, and then we will try and stream it. Um, and we're not so sure who yet. So Nele is kind of our new Captivate manager, which is very exciting. Um, and we're also open to any photographer that's not part of the collective who would like to share their work just to continue conversations. Um, yeah, just it's, it's fun. It's nice to share your work and um, not be in isolation. And that's also what CAP's about. We're a collective, an organization that wants to be a support to Durban based artists, but through this platform, not just Durban. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Paolo. Thank Pleasure, thank you. Cool. Have a good evening. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye.